Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Welcome back to another episode of the Fiqh of Love. And today I'm joined in the studio, or should I say by the pool, <laughs> with Dr. Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for coming on the show again. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Barakallah. So, Shaykh, we've been discussing the Fiqh of Love, the understanding of love and marriage in Islam, and how we can seek the right spouse. In the previous episode, we were speaking about finding the right man, mm. you know, and how the role of the guardian, how, and all the, also the role of the community as a whole in helping others get married. Sure. So how can we actually, for the men, how can we find the right woman? This is one of the most important things in the world. In, in, in most cases, whenever yeah. marriage is discussed, normally people begin with what kind of qualities a man should look for whenever he wants mm. to marry uh, in a woman. Yeah. And rarely people speak about, you know, what about the man? Mm. Uh, but we, what we did is we started off with the, the qualities that a woman should seek in, in a man who is proposing to her or she is interested in. Uh, so today um, I'd like to begin by the hadith, which is a very famous hadith, and it's a highly sound hadith agreed upon its authenticity. The guidelines with regards to choosing a woman uh, to be your life mate, in which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Tunkahul mar'at wali arba." A woman may be married or chosen for marriage for four qualities, uh, and then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam proposed the beauty, the wealth, the family lineage, mm. and uh, the deen, the mm. religious commitment. And then he said, فَضْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَاكِ So he said, peace be upon him, that you should focus on the quality of the religious commitment in a woman whom you want to take as your life mate and your mm. future spouse, lest you lose. Mm. So if you don't do that, you're a loser. Uh, I claim this hadith is broadly misunderstood mm. because a lot of those who are religiously committed or uh, you know, the students of knowledge, they think the hadith says that you should neglect all the qualities and only look for a religious woman. Mm. Even if she is not pretty, as you know that the concept of beauty varies from an individual to another. Mm. You have a preference which may be different than mine. You may see something pretty, uh, I perceive it otherwise, you know, mm. in general. And likewise, with, in respect of uh, women, in respect of women choosing men, and so on. There, people have different preferences. Mm. Uh, so, the Prophet وسلم, said, in general, why uh, people marry, do you look for the following qualities for the beauty? And it mm. comes as number one, the first uh, factor. Mm. And then uh, the, fam the wealth, the family lineage. And he said, by the end, people really care about if they do care about their religious commitment. Mm. And the Prophet Sallallahu did not dismiss the previous qualities. Mm. Rather he said, okay. So if you find a woman who has the four qualities, then mashallah, you have one of al hurul Ain <laughs> on earth. <laughs> <laughs> you have, uh, you know, yeah. you've got the best choice. Yeah. But what if you, if you can't find the four qualities, mm. you know? Three you qualities know, is good uh, as well. Well, you only found three. Yeah. Okay. Well, as long as the religious commitment, this woman is religious, she prays, mm. she, she's wearing proper hijab, uh, she's modest, mm. you know, alhamdulillah, shukrullah. And two other qualities, this mm. is great, mashallah. Mm. Because it's very hard to find uh, Mr. Right, because you yourself, you're not Mr. Right, mm. you know. But, but Sheikh, I mean, how important is the physical attraction? Because, you know, it's okay looking for the deen. You know, maybe you find a very religious woman, but if you can't, if you're not physically attracted to each other. If you're not physically attracted to, towards each other, call it off. Mm. Even if the other party is attracted to you, but you're not attracted to yeah. her, or if the woman is not attracted to the yeah. man, just turn the, the proposal down. Yeah. In a nice way, of course. Yeah. You know, do not agree. Yeah. Do not accept this proposal. Do not go forward mm. for it. Because we have a hadith also, which is 
an, an incident happened with a companion by the name Al-Mughira ibn Shu'ba. Mm. May Allah be pleased with him. When uh, uh, he proposed to Oman and he got engaged. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, have you seen her? In the past they say this woman is good. Okay, I'm marrying her. Mm. He said, no, he said, no. Onzur mm. ilayha. You got to see her. Yeah. You got to look at her. فَإِنَّهُ أَحْرَىٰ أَنْ يُؤْدَمَ بَيْنَكُمَا This is more likely to make things better between you in respect of maintaining the marriage life mm. after work. Mm. This is not like, you know, a temporary mm. relationship. Mm. This is the person whom you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Yeah. Even on bed, when you flip over, you see her face and she sees your face. Mm. If you're not attracted, if you're not physically attracted towards that person, if you don't think that she is beautiful to you mm. yeah. and if you don't think that this guy doesn't look smart <laughs> is not really satisfying you yeah. then don't accept that deal yeah. I mean sure you, you said that you know you, you should look of course at the potential you know partner uh, what how much should you see you know when you when you're going to, to meet them or you know what what exactly should well, there is a, a, a prophetic guidance in this respect when the Prophet Sallallahu says, if any of you happen to be interested in marrying a woman, a particular woman, mm. then uh, if he can see what will make him convinced mm. of marrying her, let him do so. Mm. What does it mean? Because some people went really extreme and uh, in, uh, totally on the opposite direction mm. of the meaning of the hadith. When they think that spying to see the, mm. the, the sister uh, taking a shower mm. or uh, in, 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 in the privacy of her room. No, this is not mm. permissible. Just not permissible. You know, sure. What is permissible is to see, look, hey, hey John, you know, when you see the face of a person, yeah. doesn't it tell whether this person is like a man, doesn't tell this person mm. is handsome or not? Yeah. In the case of a woman, oh, she's pretty. Mm. How did you know that she's pretty? She has a beautiful face. Yeah. So the face, the hands, tell the complexion, tell the beauty, the natural beauty, mm. you know. But sometimes they put so much makeup, uh, well <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you know, or, or maybe <laughs> some, some women, maybe they wear niqab and, you know. This is what we're talking about. Yeah. In an official meeting to propose to a yeah. girl, uh, you know, I, I want to marry your daughter for innocence, but your daughter is wearing a mm. face veil. Mm. So it's my right when I visit. Mm. to see her face mm. without seeing her face uh, the doctor said no you cannot see her before marrying mm. her or before making the mm. act <laughs> you better take off yeah <laughs> you know surprise it's a, it's a surprise it's, yeah. no what about the hair the sunnah the sunnah is to see mm. the face of the woman mm. the hand of the woman mm. you know when it comes to the hair mashallah you have a mother you have a sister mm. you can visit with the lady I'm talking here about, mm. I know there are some opinions here and there who say that mm. you can see the hair, you can see the neck, you can see the shin, mm. and all of that. But the correct view is, see what may be seen uh, yeah. like if a woman is praying. Yeah. If, if a woman is dressed up fully, you can tell whether she is kind of heavy, mm. uh, obese, or slim, mm. tall or short. Looking at the face will give you the first impression about the beauty. You want to mm. invest, invest, investigate yeah. further uh, with regards to the hair. Is it curly hair? Mm. Is it long hair, short hair, whatever? Then uh, your mother, your sister, mm. uh, your, uh, hus your, your uh, friend's wife, mm. anyone, any lady can do that. You can mm. even ask. Mm. But I wouldn't advise a sister to take off her hijab yeah. because this is opinion of the vast majority mm. of uh, the scholars mm. in this respect. So on one hand, seeing the person whom you're planning to spend the rest mm. of your life with is really important. Mm. And the Prophet wasallam advised so. He advised his mm. own companions. Yeah. And sometimes whenever you're afraid that you'll hurt the feeling of that person or her family, because you, you say, well, I'm interested in marrying your, your daughter. Can I meet with her? Can I see her? Mm. Then when you see her, you know, you feel like, oh, you're turned off. Mm. I, I don't think I'm interested. Mm. So if you're afraid that may mm. affect the relationship between you and, the, and those people, mm. so you don't have actually to take the step before 
see in her even without her knowledge. Mm. Without her knowledge. Mm. If somebody can give you a photo without uh, the yeah. makeup, okay. You're so right. Mm. We have to be very honest when it comes to exchanging photos. Mm. Uh, because the person is not going to share bed with a woman while she's ma wearing makeup. Mm. And she's not going to share bed with a guy who's bald while he's wearing a wig. You have to be real. You have mm. to be yourself. Mm. Honesty is very crucial in this respect. Yes, so when the Prophet Sallallahu said, a woman may be married for the following four qualities, basically it means the four qualities mm. are something to be considered in seeking mm. a wife. If you happen to find a wife who is mm. beautiful and she belongs to a noble family from Quraysh, mm. for mm. instance, uh, and uh, MashaAllah, she's as wealthy as Khadija mm. radiallahu anha. She's young, never been mm. married before as well, and she's attractive. And MashaAllah, mm. uh, she has memorized the Quran or have the yeah. Quran. Fine, yeah. immediately. So just, just, just on the point of lineage, I think this is a very important one as well. Yes. Uh, especially in terms of the, the immediate family. You know, how, you know, we, we were speaking uh, last episode about the, you know, the qualities of man. Uh, uh, sorry, a woman should look for. Mm -hmm. But I think when you look at the family, you can see the mother, you can see the sisters. If, if you see they're good with Islam or they're not praying, you kind of get a good judge of of, of who the, the woman is going to be like as that well. That will be considered, yeah. of course. Like, uh, you know, you're interested in marrying uh, a girl. Then you figure that all her sisters were divorced. Mm. And another one on the verge of uh, getting divorced. Why? Everybody says it's because of the interference of the mother. She mm. wants to run the show. So uh, what makes you think that you'll be any better? Yeah. <laughs> if she's going to do the same mm. with you, then you're better mm. off from the mm. beginning, you know, because it's a very serious decision. Yeah. You know, mm. it, you're not going to uh, cut her off from her family. Yeah. You're not going to take her uh, to yeah. another continent and say, do not talk to your family. Yeah, SubhanAllah, Jazakallah Khair Shaykh. We're just going to take a short break. So make sure you stay with us. We'll be right back after the break. Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum Allah. Welcome back to the Fiqh of Love. And we're here, joined in the by the pool, mm -hmm. with Dr. Muhammad Salah. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam, rahmatullah, barakatuh. Welcome back. Yeah, alhamdulillah. In this episode, we've been speaking about what men should be looking for, yeah. you know, in in a woman. And you mentioned the hadith about the four qualities. Correct. You know, four reasons, if you like, a man should be, you know, looking what they should be looking for, really. Okay. But Sheikh, I actually came across uh, a hadith where the Prophet or some. He said not to marry for, you know, for the for the uh, the looks of a woman, mm -hmm. for their beauty, not to marry for their wealth, etc. How do you, uh, you know, navigate? Oh yeah, I, I these? guess I'm aware of what you're referring to, um, and this is authentic, mm. but again, it's uh, broadly misunderstood, mm. and that's why many youth, uh, especially the seekers of knowledge. Mm. They think that the Prophet ﷺ said, do not marry a beautiful woman. Mm. Do not look for a rich woman. No, it doesn't say that. He said, لا تزوجون يسألي حسنهن Which means, do not simply marry women only because they're beautiful. Yeah. Only because of the look and uh, disregarding the rest of the qualities. Mm. Like, you know that she belongs to a terrible family. She's beautiful, but she doesn't pray. She's mm. pretty but she doesn't wear hijab, mean why? Mm. So people who aim at mm. the beauty and they disregard anything else, he said the Prophet Sallallahu said, it may ruin them, w which mm. means, uh, let me ask you this, what happens if a person happens to look for a beauty queen and he finally found her? Mm. Then God forbid, she, she had to undergo an operation and she lost some of her beauty, mm. okay? How would he feel about it? Is he going to be loyal to her mm. and say, Alhamdulillah, Qaddar Allah, Ma Sha'a Fa'al, mm. and, uh, you know, keep up with her? Or mm. 
his dream has evaporated and now he has to look for somebody else. Mm. Most likely that mm. will happen. Why? Because his main focus, he married this girl only because she's attractive. Mm. Because people say, lucky you, you're married to beauty queen. No. And mm. you're walking around with a woman whom everybody's looking at because she's not dressed up properly. So mm. that would definitely ruin yeah. your relationship. It doesn't mm. say if you found a woman whom you're looking for to marry, a mm. beautiful, no, do not marry her. Of course, this is totally the opposite mm. of what the Prophet mm. said in the hadith, Unzur ilayha fa'innahu ahra an yu'dama baynakuma. Look for her that is indeed more likely to make things better between you from the beginning. If you feel attracted, then proceed on with the proposal. Mm. Likewise, he said, and do not marry women simply for their wealth. Why? It may turn them, after you get married, you mm. find that, that she's very arrogant. Mm. She's treating you like a slave. Yeah. And I'm, I'm actually handling a case right now where the person was poor, doesn't mm. have any means. So the family of the girl, they give him a flat, they take care of his bills and everything. Mm. Now with his job, he cannot, with his income, he cannot keep up with the demands of the wife. So she is treating him like her servant. Mm. And if she ever gets mad at him, she kicks him out. This is my house, get out. So he's out. Mm. And uh, you know, when people talk about reconciliation, he says, but if I go back, I will go back as a servant again, mm. Sheikh, you know. So if it is only wealth, but it doesn't mean that if the woman mm. that you are about to marry happen to be rich mm. or inherited a lot of money or mm. she belongs to a rich family, mm. it doesn't mean to forget about her, yeah. not to marry her. Yeah. Wait a minute. Prophet mm. Muhammad وسلم, got married to Khadija radiallahu anha and she was the wealthiest mm. woman in Mecca mm. and all the youth were dying to marry her. But she kept turning down all the proposals. Mm. But when it came to Muhammad, mm. she liked him and she managed to deliver the message to him mm. so that he would marry mm. her, Sallallahu mm. Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah. she was way yeah. richer. Yeah. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't mm. rich, but she mm. was rich. And mm. uh, they got married and they were the happiest couple ever. And he never mm. took another wife so long mm. as he was married mm. to Khadija radiallahu anha. We're talking about so many years that they, they stayed yeah. uh, together. So what are some of the other ways and, and means of choosing the right wife? You know, what, what should we be looking for in, in a wife? No doubt that, as we mentioned once, you know, when you marry, you're not only marrying the individual. Mm. You're merging two families uh, mm. together. So inquiring about the parents, inquiring mm. about the siblings, mm. inquiring about the, the family, Mm. is really important. Mm. Uh, there is a difference between the family lineage and the reality mm. that those people, they respect their in-laws. Mm. Those people honor other people. Mm. They do not look down at mm. them. So all of that is very important to mm. find out beforehand. Yeah. And when we're, when we're actually discussing with the family, you know, what should we, what should one conceal and what should one tell about themselves? You know, what are the limits regarding this? Uh, that's an important question. Um, honesty requires a person to share with the other party or the person who's proposing to that certain things and certain things should not be discussed. Mm. For instance, the uh, physical health. Mm. If somebody is having uh, a congenital heart disease, mm. he should say, Mm. Somebody is having some sort of sexual disability should say that, mm. you know, whether a man or a woman. Mm. There are th there is one sister, uh, for instance, who, who called once and she said that she cannot tolerate this intimacy. Mm. She thinks it is disgusting. Mm. She cannot share bed with her husband as far as having sexual relations. Mm. She says he is super nice, but I never thought of this process. The man wants to satisfy his physical desire, his mm. physical needs, and this is perfectly legitimate. She cannot tolerate that. She thinks this is sick and this is disgusting. Mm. So if you know from the beginning, you're not into that, mm. why the person is marrying. He wants to mm. have kids, mm. and also he wants to satisfy the sexual needs mm. on a regular basis. 
a man who's having you know a sexual problem that cannot um, that with which he cannot function as a husband mm. he should be very honest from the beginning yeah. because if he's not he's going to ruin the future of this mm. woman mm. okay Sheikh, what about other people you know some people maybe they've not been practicing uh, Islam you know, all their life maybe they, they had a jahiliya you know people who who may have previously even been involved in zina, yeah. you know, who who had never been married before, should do they have to actually uh, mention this to the proposed uh, spouse? It depends. Hmm. If the person was involved in whatever activities, including illicit relationship before in the past, then they have repented, repented sincerely. Not just yesterday, and now because he wants to marry this girl, he says, you know, I don't have to talk about it because I made tawbah. Mm -hmm. Or because uh, this person proposed to her, and this is like, you know, the best catch. So she says, Alhamdulillah, I've made tawbah. No more. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Not right on the spot. Yeah. Somebody was naive. She was tricked. And she got involved in an illicit relationship. She regretted it. She's been crying, she repented, and uh, she sincerely turned to Allah with sincere repentance. Then somebody proposed to her, she shouldn't share that with him. Mm. Why? Because this is past, mm. and she has repented. Also, among the things which if you ever share with the spouse, they can never forget about it, and they will keep thinking about it. And mm. for any reason, if there is a difference of opinion or if there is a little fight, they may surface mm. this issue. And they may bring it up or even uh, cast the blame on you and say, yeah, you're doing so because you're an adulteress mm. or because you're used to that. So it will be a terrible experience. And yeah. that's why if the person have repented, this is past. Repented sincerely, not just verbally. Yeah. This is past. Among the things which should be shared uh, um, before the uh, marriage mm. is concluded and even before the engagement, uh, diseases of uh, contagious nature, mm. whether sexual transmitted diseases, uh, you know, in case that somebody was married previously and he picked up one of those diseases, which you know for certain that, uh, you know, if you were to have a sexual relation with another person, mm it will be transmitted to them. Yeah. That should be discussed, yeah. fair enough. Uh, and then the other party should decide whether they go for it or not. Diseases which may affect functioning uh, mm. as a family father, as a person, you know, a woman who removed her uterus, so she mm. will not be able to conceive or have mm. children. Uh, that should be mentioned, because mm. one of the main reasons why yeah. people get married is to have an offspring. Yeah. So when he finds out, oops, mm. and she's beautiful and everything, she's the kindest mm. person on earth, but unfortunately she cannot bear children. And this is for certain, we know. Well, we can adopt a child. Well, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about it is the right of the other party to know the nature of your sickness, mm. you know, yeah. and whether you will be able to function or mm. not. You know, also, you know, some, some women, they don't want kids. They might be, be able to uh, bear children, but they just don't want children. Should this, of course, should this be discussed before pre-marriage? Of course. You know, uh, unlike wives, when a man says, you know, I, I want to marry, but I don't want to have any children. Why not? Mm. I want to have children. Mm. You know, it's my right. Why do you pri deprive me? You know, you should be honest, you know, mm. from the beginning yeah. to make mention of that. So everything will be clear, mm. you know. Yeah, it's good. So, Sheikh, just before we finish as well, you know, sometimes uh, you may be questioned or someone may be questioned about a particular individual, maybe the guardian, you know, he's interested in, in someone. So he asks you for a character reference and you know that there's some issues with, with this particular individual. Would, you know, if you reveal some of these things, is this classed as backbiting? The... Ayah of the Quran says, Ya ayuha ladina amanu wa hu you believe, kunu kawamina lilahi shuhada a bil qist. So mm. you gotta give the right testimony. Mm. And do not expand. 
perhaps you have some differences between you and that person. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you don't like him for whatever reason. But somebody have asked you about this person because he's proposing mm -hmm. to your daughter mm -hmm. or to my daughter. Mm -hmm. That what do you know about him that can affect the relationship? Well, yeah. this guy is a thief. You say that he is known to be thief. Mm -hmm. He is known to have outside uh, marriage relationship. Mm -hmm. He is known to be alcoholic mm -hmm. and do not exceed the limit That's of it. just giving the testimony or the shahada, mm -hmm. honestly, which will benefit the other party to make the decision. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for for this particular episode. So, thanks for coming, Sheikh. You're most welcome. Jazakallah khair. And for those of you at home, make sure you tune in next time for another episode of the Fiqh of Love. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.